Welcome to Waves at Factory Berlin with Beats by Dr. Dre. I am Micah and I am Head of Artist Relations at Beatport and I've been in Berlin in the music industry since almost 20 years. I've worked for different labels including Beepage Control run by Alan Alien. I am at Beatport since five years and I used to have my own booking agency called Pointer. We're here together with Patrick Mason. Welcome. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. As I already said, <laughs> this is the most exciting day in uh, 2021 for myself. <laughs> uh, just being not at home, uh, meeting people in real life. That How are happen. you? I'm, I'm actually great. I'm actually great. Um, I have, actually have to say like really, really low and like in secret because I know this year and the last year has been already very challenging and saying that you're doing actually quite well might uh, get you like the boot from one or another side but I think I'm actually quite well. That's really good to hear. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, you're a man with very many different personas and wearing a lot of different hats. <laughs> you're Fill me in. Uh, you're an art director, you're a designer, you're an illustrator, you're a singer, you're a performer, you're a DJ, you're a fashion designer. What did I miss? Dancer. You're a dancer, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. uh, tell us about it. Like, how is it to have so many different personas? Are they all different or is there just one Patrick Mason? <laughs> well, it might seem to you guys um, that I have more personas because the way that I dress, it's also very controversial, also very on the eccentric side, but uh, it's all me. Um, I have different facets that I like to display on a certain um, yeah, platform or just in everyday life because this is what you see right now. I would actually dress like this to go to the bakery next door. Uh, so for me, fashion and, and styling is just a part of me, a part of expressing myself um, and yeah, my personality. So. That's amazing. And um, do you have like a favorite form of art or do they all like uh, coexist next to each other or are they all intertwined? How does that work? Uh, so for me, as I grew up uh, in a household um, where music uh, and uh, art was always a big thing, um, I grew up with Michael Jackson. So before I even was able to stand in my crib, I was holding on to the spikes and which is like rocking to <laughs> beat it and, and, and thriller. Um, so I always grew up with like dancing, expressing myself. Um, when, since I was little, I was like acting, um, being every school play that there was, a school band and stuff. Uh, I think also a I'm a very musical person as well and very outgoing. And as I moved on into uh, my adulthood and moving to Berlin and being able to express so many different aspects of my life that um, I was not able to um, express that much when I was living back in Bavaria because it's a bit more close-minded. I was still in the closet, uh, so a lot of um, influences and different aspects of my life were narrowed down to a little bare minimum. So coming to Berlin basically opened everything up and like this huge explosion of creativity. So I did it, did it all. I knew that I wanted to do to work in a creative field if it's design, if it's drawing, because I love to love to draw back then. Um, and yeah, so one aspect added to the next one. So when I started um, studying graphic design, art direction, fashion, at some point um, I was like. Man, fuck, I love fashion so much, but I can't sew. But I was like, hmm, maybe I should just give it a try. And then over the years, while I was still studying graphic design, my passion for fashion grew to such an extent that I said, like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And so I started gra uh, fashion design as well. And then dancing and art and everything came together. And for me, as an artist, being on stage and uh, being a performing artist, um, music, dancing, any kind of art, um, is intertwined with each other because it feeds off each, of each other and it um, attracts the same emotion in people. And I think that it's very beautiful if you have the possibility to reinvoke as much as possible. Yeah, that's super exciting to be able to have all these different skills and working <laughs> together with, like it must have so many possibilities if you're passionate about so many different kind of aspects and then it frees you up for all possibilities exactly, basically yeah. right it doesn't limit you that's 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 super great so which passion came first in a way music or or fashion I think like you 
started your fashion career before you started your musical career. Yes, exactly. But you just mentioned already, like as a kid, you were <laughs> highly into yeah. into music. And was there maybe like uh, a fashion icon that you had? I mean, less than when you were older, but maybe if you look back in your in your immediate family, for example, or is there like what's your first fashion? Um, experience that you had where you were kind of like okay this is amazing this is I what think i want to do first, <laughs> my first uh, fashion experience was basically michael jackson michael jackson was my first style and fashion icon like um, especially when i was like able to um distinct between what he was wearing on the stage and in the music videos of course um i always remembered he was very very into like these very silky flowy uh shirts that it was always up uh, buttoned down and or buttoned up and then he had like these fans and everything was like flowy so for me literally like everything that was flowing and had like its own motion was like for me the, the perfect things i can remember being five or six years old and um, there was a storm going uh, going over germany and like a huge and crazy wind were blowing and I got into uh, the bathroom with my mom's and I stole her little silk robe and I went onto my balcony and was just like literally like standing there <laughs> <laughs> and reenacting nice. Michael Jackson or like all his belt buckle uh, pants and stuff like iconic back then. So and I already knew that this is stuff that I liked, which is out of the ordinary. If you look at people walking down the street in a normal day life in, in South Germany, it's quite plain and quite safe and conservative. And I always strived for something more than that. So yeah, I can see that totally. <laughs> I and so. I mean, yeah, you you do have a quite an eccentric and recognizable style. Tell us, what are you wearing today? So today um, I'm wearing my Gucci sunglasses. I think they give you the right pop <laughs> 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 definitely for today. Um, my Comme des Garçons uh, shirt dress, um, Vivian Westwood skirt and of course my Margiela tubby boots. Without Very nice. them I could not survive. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know who inspired you for this look today. So today's look is inspired um, by a character of the movie um, The Boys in the Band. Uh, the character is called Harold. I will not um, uh, explain any further if you want to know who exactly it is. You have to watch it. <laughs> That's great. I watched it last night actually and I can highly recommend it. It's, it's a really good movie. It's quite intense. Right? Yeah. Right. It starts off uh, quite easy and uh, you think you're into like, you yeah. know, just a little drama and it's then like it the really pandemic, actually really. heats up. It's yeah. like the fucking pandemic. It starts easy but then shit hits the fan. <laughs> it does, it does. So go watch it if you have some time. Um, you have already worked, you know, with uh, Ray-Ban for example. Tell us a little bit about your ex most exciting collaborations that you've already had? Um, like you just said it, uh, Ray-Ban was my most recent one and probably also my most um, exciting one. Um, of course, everybody knows Ray-Ban. Ray-Ban is like a household name in the eyewear industry since almost a century, if not longer. Um, and them coming to me, asking me to be uh, a creative director and completely designing uh, my own shape would be the first time in brand history that an outside designer is uh, able to do this. I, w I was hugely flattered and of course on the spot um, got super anxious and nervous about that mm -hmm. as well. Um, but the whole team uh, was super, super lovely. I got to see the manufacturing company of Luxottica, which is like in the north of Italy, in Agordo. And everyone who works there is like a traditional huge company, with like 20,000 people working there and it's mostly families and inhabitants of the city and it's like they're very closely knit and you can see that they're doing this um, for their passion they're taking so much pride in it and me coming in there basically with, with a fresh new wind because the uh, luxotico or for example ray-ban were always like more uh, conservative models um, and then me basically bringing the stick <laughs> and I'm like okay now we're gonna fuck shit up and make it like really really um yeah, to open the market into um, luxury and uh, for fashion forward, progressive per, uh, people. Yeah. And they were completely excited and up for it. And um, to see that they're so into it as much as I am, um, just gave me the drive to like push it even further. And I think the end result, um, yeah, 
Yeah, they're, they're exciting. <laughs> it's certainly very different. Yeah, and it's absolutely. already sold out, correct? It was sold out within three days, yeah. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> and uh, tell me, so how, how does this work? Like, how did that uh, collaboration start? Did they just call you up and said, hi, we're from Ray-Ban, can you please design <laughs> some sunglasses no, for us? Not quite, not quite much. Um, it's, a, it's actually a funny story. So I, me and Radio Slave, uh, we have this project called Served, SRVD. And uh, we were supposed to play at um, Pornceptual birthday, I think it was one year anniversary at Griesmühle. Not Griesmühle, it was um, Alte Münze. Alte Münze, right. And uh, for some reason, uh, Matt got an eye infection like uh, one day before the gig. So it was either cancelling or me doing it by myself, doing basically a, a DJ gig, a techno gig, prime time. Uh, at a techno party for me that was kind of the first ish uh, to that extent uh, that many people um, and I was shit scared <laughs> shit scared I've been to this party before so I kind of knew what to expect um, but it was still very, very frightening so I like packed my two best friends and I was like you need to accompany me because I otherwise gonna die behind the decks and when I got there, it was like already banging, people um, sweating, like the atmosphere was completely out of order, but in a really good way. Um, so that basically contributed to my nervousness being over the top as it was. And um, as if that wasn't, be, uh, wasn't bad enough for myself or my condition, uh, my booker uh, to, the, to that extent came to me and was like, oh, by the way, and the guys from Ray Ban and Afterlife are here to watch you play. Mm. So no not pressure. putting you on the spot. No I mean, um, and my face literally froze and I was like, okay, fuck what I'm gonna do. And um, because the girl who was playing before me started with like 150 BPM. And back to at that time, 2018, 2019, for me, Fast Techno was 134 already. So I was like, okay, if you have to bring that shit down to that extent, you better make it good <laughs> <laughs> because everybody would leave otherwise. But it worked out really, really well. It was, I think it was one of the best gigs I've played up to this point. And uh, yeah, after my gig, Aurelia, who was doing like the PR and uh, manage, uh, managing for Raven Studios, uh, which is like the underline or the, um, the sub um, brother of um, the big one, the big main line, um, asked me like, hey, we get a business proposal for you. I think you would fit really well. Um, let's talk. And the rest, you know. That's amazing. <laughs> That's really exciting. Let me know, like, if you could choose which collaboration would you love to do? Do you have, like, a, a goal or, like, uh, somebody that you really want to work with? And fashion? Could be anything. <sighs> well, um, I would love... Music-wise, I would love to work with Grace Jones uh, or FK Twix. I think um, these two women are like a spirit animal to me. Like Grace Jones from a very young age already. Um, even back then when I was like six years old and I didn't in understand the blending of the genders and why is a, a woman so strong and looking like a guy but has like still like this distinctive features. Um, so Grace Jones was always my, yeah spirit animal and the most craziest inspiration that I've drawing from till today. And FK Twix, basically the same in green. And she's also a Capricorn, so I mean, hello. I'm a, I'm a Capricorn as you well, are? so yes. <laughs> Oops. Corona. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, can, I can see that, I can relate to that. I've seen her perform, I've seen both perform and uh, Grace Jones I don't know how old she was when I see, saw her at Primavera, like maybe like 68 already yeah. or something. Lucky you. Unbelievable. <laughs> it, I have to say, it was like one of the really great uh, performances I've seen. It's her she, energy. It's her so energy, genuine. Her everything was, yeah, it was amazing. So I can, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that also working well together. So yeah. maybe after this um, gets aired, she'll just crossed. call you <laughs> and be like, Patrick? Yeah. And fashion-wise, for sure, Magella and Y Project, these are the yeah. brands that I go crazy for. Great. So tell me, um, you've only recently started to DJ uh, and to perform live, and now we have Corona, who 
yeah, kind of like probably changed a lot of your plans yeah. that you had. <laughs> uh, no real performance is currently possible. Um, yeah. What has changed for you? How do you get your inspiration right now? I mean, you said you were doing really well, which is uh, which is great. Obviously, not everybody can say that. Um, what have you been up to? Well. Once the first lockdown last year happened, um, we all were in our minds thinking about, okay, two months, three months tops, and then we're going to go back to normal. That was the mindset that definitely I had in mind. So for the first two months, I was like, okay, uh, you've been working for the past nine years nonstop without any breaks. You haven't had a proper vacation. So just use that. So literally, I was living on my couch uh, with no, yeah, obligations whatsoever so I let myself drift for a little maybe a little bit too far um, but at some point I was like okay now it's time to get back to work problem was work did not get back to me mm. which means um, if you're not able to perform and someone as an outspoken artist or as an very extroverted artist as me, like loving to be on the stage and, and need uh, the feedback from the crowd. I love the interaction between it because it's like literally action, reaction. Um, and just to connect with uh, someone else through music, through dance, through passion, fashion, you name it. Um, just mingling with people is very, very important to me and my, in my line of work as well. So by knowing that it's not going to happen, of course, um, depression one hit, depression two, depression three. So I've went through it, definitely. It's like a roller coaster ride up and down. Uh, I was quite lucky that we had like a really, really beautiful summer. Um, I used overextended free time that I had on my hands uh, to reconnect with like a lot of my friends. Over the past years, it was very difficult for me to be in social interactions because I was always traveling, uh, barely at home. And when I was at home, I was happy to not see anyone because if you're like in four different countries in, during a week and play th three different acts on a weekend you're just like playing club playing club bus back and forth um the last thing you want is like come home and just go in another club or is go in another bar with like 50 60 or thousands of people and just like be uh, again 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 um so i used this time to reconnect with like all of my good friends and we became really really closer again and um, i came to appreciate that as well um, because after all that crazy lifestyle of course it's nice it looks nice from the outside being invited to fashion shows sitting front row being dressed here then going to this gig and to this concert meeting these people like it looks good from the outside but it's very very draining and it's very very exhausting at the same time and you tend to live in a little bubble, um, which is not real. And coming home to people who are, and people who genuinely care for you, uh, normal topics, not all about music and fashion all the time, um, keeps yourself grounded. And um, I'm very, very grateful and very happy for my family who is also and always supporting me and uh, my friends as well. I think I wouldn't have made it through lockdown if I had like a couple of walks in the park, still 1.5 meters apart from each other <laughs> through the mask. Um, yeah. yeah, but that was definitely a point that helped me a lot and that I came to realize that this is the most important thing in life. Yeah, very, very true. Um, for myself, I've, I've really learned to chill out a little bit more mm. to get rid of the FOMO, mm. I have to say. I have, uh, it's Done, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, like uh, I don't have to worry about uh, which party to attend, mm -hmm. where to go, if I want to network after work, basically. Get guest lists. <laughs> get guest lists, exactly. Um, so that's that's definitely been, been good for myself. Um, yeah, I mean, your performances are quite, you know, lively out there. Um, you do did say that you need to connect to the audience. Um, what do you think about live streaming? Have you started to embrace it? Is that something you do, live you like? <laughs> live streaming was never really on my radar before, um, yeah, lockdown happened or Corona happened. Um, I always enjoyed people doing it before because I know that her, for example, which is like blew up in the pandemic and rightfully so um, was before like also in 2019 very present um, and I've heard friends playing there but it was never for me 
When I listen to someone else's set, it was usually over SoundCloud while I'm in the gym. So I had never connected it really through, yeah, visuals. Because to be quite frank, most DJs are quite static behind the decks. So there's not really much to see or to learn. Um, so when you have like someone, um, like for example, Lady Starlight, who's very entertaining also um, by watching because you just feel the energy through the screen and she loves what she's doing and uh, she's also a really good friend of mine and all blessings to her because she was also the one who said for my first um, her set which took place uh, beginning or mid of the year uh, last year and I remember calling her up with like hey Colleen can you tell me like should I do it like should I play it safe or should I go like all in like Patrick mode it's like you need to go fully fucking frontal <laughs> and so she encouraged me like to do like outfit changes and go like really weird and um, that was actually the one thing that translated very well t for me uh, because it's not new for me to be in front of a camera. I know how to play with a camera, like, you know, I can do a little bit of here and there, but um, DJing at the same time, uh, and you don't get like a immediate response if your tracks is good, you know? If, if people don't like a track, they will let you know by either leaving the dance floor <laughs> or yeah. like doing the little two-step and like looking really weird at the camera. <laughs> so for me, it was uh, more like, okay, you gonna do you. You gonna give a display of what you love in music, what you love um, in movement and love what you do in fashion. So just make that your asset. And for some reason, it worked out really well. I got booked and booked and booked and booked and booked after that. And uh, people enjoy it. And not only the people, but I do it as well. If they see that the energy translates through the screen and makes people dance, makes people encouraged and more hopeful that things are going to go back to normal, because that's what I love to do, to create this sense of timelessness and um, make all that despair and like, yeah, bothering minds that are in people's back of the head to just disappear and if it's just for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's been super important, I think, like to for people in the industry as well. Absolutely. To keep us going through the pandemic. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so uh, much for having me. It was a pleasure to have you <laughs> and super exciting what's coming up uh, in, this, in this year. I think there's a lot of new output from you and <laughs> yeah. To everybody out there, please check out Patrick Mason on her, on YouTube, on Facebook, <laughs> on Instagram especially. Um, yes. Yeah, and thank you for joining. Thank you.